It's good to see everybody out this morning, especially those of you that have been sick and not been here for a while. It's, it's good to see you back with us. We do have some visitors, and we especially are thankful for you. And the disclaimer is, we have hired a full-time preacher, but today you're stuck with me. So, uh, hate that for you, but we're going to see if we can't get a little something out of our lesson today. One of the things I have trouble coming up with when I'm uh, once or twice every year or two that I do this is coming up with a topic. Something that I figure that I know something about and that it would be good for us. And what I do is I cheat. I get online and I look at what other preachers, full-time preachers do and read through their lesson titles. And if I can find something that looks like, well, maybe that would be good for me to study it. And maybe it's something that I know a little bit about and might be good for you. So that's what I've done. And reading through there, I found this lesson topic that was called Growing Old Gracefully. Now, the gracefully part I'm still working on, but the growing old I'm about to get down. So I've, uh, I've decided I could probably do that. Most of the young people here, you don't understand that. You know, you haven't, you haven't experienced the, the things that comes to you as you're growing old. A lot of times you don't realize you're old until you look in the mirror or when you try to get up for the morning or when your fingers won't work like they're supposed to work. And then you catch yourself, maybe you don't remember things as good as you used to. You, you understand that you're declining. Most young people are looking forward. You know, they're thinking, ah, next year I can drive. Uh, next year I can do this. And I'm going to be out on my own. That you kind of keep looking forward to growing old until you get up in your 30s and you start kind of leveling out. And in your 40s, you kind of start rolling over the hill the other side. But as you're young, you just don't understand that. Your idea of growing old up to a point is that you're getting better, you're getting stronger, you're getting more responsibility, you're getting to do what you want to do. As you start over that other side, all those things that start working in reverse. So when you look at those people, a lot of younger people, when you look at somebody that's on that other side sliding off, you see some people that are kind of discontented. You know, they ache all the time about their fingers being sore and that they can't, back hurts and all that. You see that. You see they're also kind of set in their ways sometimes. And some people are kind of bitter. And, and it's sad, but uh, that's true. That, that happens sometimes as people get older. One quote I found here says, <clears throat> some old women and men grow bitter with age. The more their teeth drop out, the more biting they get. And that seems to be, unfortunately, what kind of happens to us sometimes. As we get older, we have less patience. We seem to lose our filter that we have sometimes. And, you know, as you get older, you usually hurt. You younger people, <clears throat> that are still at home, if mom or dad has to work all night or they're a little sick and they just don't feel good, is it a good time to kind of pick on them a little bit? <laughs> it's not, is it? Afraid that older people sometimes feel like that all the time. So you have to get, cut them a little bit of slack that they, they don't feel as well. And you can see it, I've seen it. <clears throat> I grew up in the church. When I was younger, we lived, I actually was born in Ohio and, and we moved every two or three years. And so my earliest memories are going from different congregations. And every congregation, even up to now, that I've been in, there's been older people that complained. Maybe rightfully so. But two things, and it's kind of, I'm saying this kind of as, as, as a joke, but it's something that we got, two things that you hear about it, and I've known dozens of people that did this in my life. They would sit at the back and say they can't hear. I've known several people that would move up front, and they're a good example to us. But some don't. I don't think we've got anybody like that here now. Do we, David? We got anybody here now that sits back that can't hear? I, I told him I was going to pick on him. The other thing that people that would, as you get older, a lot of times you're on blood thinners and other things, you get cold easy. In the summertime, the air conditioner freezes you. Understandable. But I've known lots 
of older people that would sit on the register and complain about being cold even to the point of stacking books on it so that it wouldn't blow on them even though it burned everybody else up around them. That happens. We don't have anybody here doing that that I know of. Uh, Cody's out of town today, so I pick on him. And I told him, make sure he listens to this. He's not complained a lot about it, but he said, I get cold. Well, he said, you're sitting on a register. <laughs> Move. <laughs> but those kinds of things that, that young people see and some of us older people, me included, I've always told Kathy now for 40 years, don't let me be like that when I get older. And she's the whole 40 years shook her head and said, I don't have a chance. <laughs> so, but I've known a lot of people that, growed, that grew old gracefully. They were examples. They, they always took everything in stride and they seemed like they, they used their experience and the things that, to, to help. And you know, that didn't happen by accident. And it didn't happen that they suddenly turned a leaf when they were my age. They started when they were young. So all of you people thinking I was gonna talk about old people, I'm not. I'm gonna to talk to you young people. Growing old does not happen, gracefully doesn't happen by accident. It just doesn't happen one day. You have to understand certain principles and apply them when you're young or you as you get older will be just like those people that you said well I hope I don't grow old to be like that another quote I found here says most spend most let me speak most men spend the first half of their lives making the second half miserable and that's the truth how you spend in the first half of your life will cause your second half of your life to be good or easier or whatever will you grow old gracefully you can we've got examples in the Bible of people that grew old gracefully done great good in their older age we look at Moses at the age of 120 he gave great spe speeches he told the people things that they needed to do he worked hard Deuteronomy 34, 7 says Moses was 120 years old when he died and his eyes were not dim nor his natural vigor diminished. I'm sure God was with him in that, but he worked at it. He lived his life. Joshua, as he addressed the elders of Israel, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, this is in Joshua 24, many of us know this, have know this passage. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He was an older fellow and he's kept his, he used his age gracefully. He did good with it. Brazella, the Gilead, that's in 2 Samuel 19 verses 31 32. And Brazella the Gilead came down from Roglium and went across the Jordan with the king to escort him across the Jordan. Now, Brazilia was a very aged man, 80 years old, and he had provided the kings with supplies. He was out working. He was doing things. He was aging with grace. Dorcas, which we can read about in the New Testament in Acts 9. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds, which she did. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. She had lived her life, even up to her old, even up to her death, doing good things. Peter, the apostle, he aged gracefully. He became an elder, we can read about in 1 Peter 5. He remained diligent as death approached. 2 Peter 1.13 says, I think it right, as long as I'm in this body, to stir you up by way of reminder since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. He worked hard and worked even harder when he seen that his time was short. Peter also, you know, he had failed a couple of times, had received a real strong rebuke from Paul. Do you think he was bitter about that? Second Peter 3.15, he makes this statement. 
and count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. He was not a vengeful person. He was a forgiving person. He, when he did something wrong, even in his old age, he showed grace. You know, we don't have to go to the Bible to find those examples. We've had people here among us that are now gone that showed grace in their older ages. We've all known those people, and we've been blessed by the fact that we knew them and need to remember the good that they did amongst us and strive to do the same thing. Even though you can, it is... Sometimes, unfortunate that even though we, we should have knowledge as we get older and we should be able to do it with grace, a lot of times how we lived when we were young affects that. There's a lot of different things that we can do when we're young, that principles that we can apply that will ensure that we'll grow older and be the kind of people we need to be. In Galatians 6, talks about whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. This is true in everything. Now, we've studied that. You've heard a lot of people talk about that in times past. You sow corn, you're going to get corn. You take good care of your body when you're young, eat right, live right. You enjoy good health most usually when you get older. You disregard all those things. Your body suffers for it. That same thing happens to even a little bit worse in a spiritual realm. Job 4, verse 8 there says, Even as I've seen those that plow iniquity and sow trouble reap the same. A lot of the things that happen to us in midlife and older life is, reaction, is actual the, the things that came along because of things we did when we were younger. Much of the discontent that you see that happens with people happens to the fact that when they were younger, they didn't follow good principles and got themselves into troubles that, that follow them the rest of their life. Galatians 5, starting with verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, revelries, dissensions, divisions. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The next two verses are the opposite of that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Look at the difference between those two things there. Contrast the the fruit that's mentioned there. What, what do you get when you do those things? When, when you plow that kind of corn, what kind of corn do you get? If you do all these other things, a lot of times in life, you receive troubles. If you do the others, then you do good. Hosea says in chapter 10, verse 12, sow with a view to righteousness, reap in accordance with kindness. What we do when we're young affects us the rest of our life. We need to remember that. A lot of people, it's kind of an old saying, you'll hear this a lot anymore, about people sowing their wild oats when they're young. You know, you may not hear that term, but it's evidently I think today more people believe that than they ever did before. You see, you see things that people actually help their kids do uh, when they're young that it just makes you wonder, what are they thinking? They're going to be making this crop. They're sowing a crop of, of iniquity here and hoping for a crop failure. That normally doesn't happen. It's usually the opposite. The things that you want to grow, you have to work at those things. Things you don't want to grow just pop up like weeds pretty easy. That same thing happens in our, in our lives. Many people fail to realize that if you sow problems, you make bad decisions, you're going to have a harvest of trouble when you get older. If we don't take care of our bodies when we're younger, then when we get older, you have problems. 
the same thing happens in spiritual things. Bad decisions that you make now can affect your whole life. You make bad choices in a mate, and you wind up being divorced. Your children are split up. Uh, you make bad decisions with, with alcohol, with drugs. All those things can affect you. They can hurt your life forever. And the bad thing about it is most people don't realize they're doing that. They're just kind of like doing their own thing. And it's the very, these very things that if you continue doing those, one of those days you wake up and you've went over that hump and you're in that old section of your life and you're having to deal with all the things that you did when you were younger. Another quote is this. <clears throat> He that would pass the latter part of life with honor and decency must, when he's young, consider that he shall one day be old. You need to remember, if you want to live a life that's, that has a whole lot less trouble with it, that when this life comes down at the end, that you can be a, a person that has that chance of going to heaven, start off. Don't make bad decisions when you're young. Start young working on the things that... that will help you reach those goals. Jesus said in Matthew 4, man shall not live by bread alone. Now we realize there that he's not talking about that you're going to have to live on a bread and water, uh, like we used to say the prisoner's going to live on bread and water. This is a lot deeper than that. When he says bread, he means all these physical things that we have, that we see in our lives, that, we, that, we're, that surrounds us now, that we work for. Life's a whole lot more than those physical things. And when he's talking about life, that's just not that you're still alive. It's if you, that's talking about living fully. Life is more than bread and water. Life is more than the material things that you have. If you want an abundant life, you need to realize that this life is not going to last forever. So that when you're older, you have something besides material things. Luke 12, 5 says, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. A lot of people live that the only thing that you're going to get in life is what you can accumulate. A friend of mine, when I was younger, his older brother got a real good job and moved to Ohio. He'd come back down here, and he had... New pickup truck, all fancied up, big wheels and loud exhaust on it. It's really nice truck. Had bought him a boat, bought him a motorcycle. On the front of his truck, he had a license plate. He who dies with the most toys wins. You know, that's been 40 years ago. I don't know what's happened to him. I doubt if he's winning. Because he started life off with the idea of live for today. Party, have fun. Spend it all. This is what's important. I think he's going to find that wasn't what was important. If we don't learn this idea when we're young, we'll waste a whole lot of our life going after the wrong things. And we'll hate ourselves for it when we're older. Solomon realized this in Ecclesiastes 2, starting in verse 17. So I hated life. Because what is done under the sun was grievous to me, for all is vanity and is striving after the wind. I hated all my toil in which I toil under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be, a wise, will be wise or a fool. Yet he will be master of all for which I have toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This is also vanity. Worked hard all his life. Solomon was rich. He was smart. God gave him wisdom. He accumulated a lot. But he realized, I'm going to die and leave this to somebody else. So if all we strive for is what we can have today, we're going to leave it. And that's just vanity. We've spent all that time, and we haven't learned anything. A French philosopher saw the ungraceful way that many old people live out their later years. And a result of learning this truth too late, he wrote, <clears throat> Old men grasp more at life than babies and leave it with much worse grace than young people. It is because all their labors having been for this life, they perceive at last their troubles lost. 
They worked all their life for the wrong thing. They get down to the end of the life. They're, a lot of times they're bitter. You're just like Solomon here. <laughs> he hated that he had spent all this time on things that somebody else was going to enjoy. He wasn't going to enjoy them. There is more to life than material things. To grow old gracefully, we must realize this and find that which makes life full and abundant. John 10, 10, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He's the true and living way. And how do we find out that true and living way? It's the word of God that shows us. John 5, 13, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are, and they, are they which testify of me. So when Jesus said there in Matthew 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's what we got to look at. That's what we got to pay heed to now while we're younger, some of us, and live our life towards that end. So when we get to end of life, we'll realize uh, heaven and not be like Solomon. Say here, everything that I've worked for is going to be given to someone else and they may use it foolishly. Luke 9.25 says, for what, a man, for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? He's not gained much, has he? Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. The word blessed means happy, rich. Wisdom is insight, understanding, which enables one to make the best use of his or her talents and circumstances, avoiding the mistakes and pitfalls of life. A lot of times, we don't use that. That quote there, from I'll read the rest of it there in Proverbs 3, uh, 3, verse 13, 14. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof of fine gold. Wisdom is better than having a lot of money, or having a new truck, or a boat, or a motorcycle. If that wisdom is knowing where God is, knowing what Jesus has done for us. Ephesians 5.15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The days are evil because they're short. Time's short. Time's short for all of us. It's shorter for me than it is for a lot of you younger people out here. But our time is short. James gets after us about that. He says in, in chapter 4, verse 13, says, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what will be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. We see steam come up and it just disappears. That's the way our life is. Now, those of you younger think another 10, 20 years, wow, that's forever. Uh, when you get up in your 60s, 10 or 20 years, that's kind of all you got. You need to remember time is short. And the older you get, the, the more you realize that, that time is precious. This wisdom that we ought to have, we can basically get it two different ways. You can either get it from what you've personally experienced, which can be wasteful and time-consuming, you can spend a whole lot of your life doing trial and error things. I call that reinventing the wheel. And many times you'll see people do that. They don't pay attention to what other people have done and what they can say. And they start off from, from zero every time. You have to bear the consequences of that. Sometimes when you're young, you don't pay attention to what's, what you can read in the Bible or what the example that you have from maybe someone else that's older and the advice then you're just starting right over from zero. You're reinventing the wheel. You might make mistakes that will follow you the rest of your life. God in his word, in Proverbs 2, verse 6, says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You can't find a better source than God for getting wisdom. Proverbs 3 says, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, and by understanding hath he established the heavens. 
He basically has made everything. So who could we go to to get better advice on how to, how to live? Proverbs talks about those same things that God tells us as my son, let him not depart from thine eyes, keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall thy, th they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. You can kind of get a head start in life and on the things that, that, uh, that are going to come upon you if you learn to pay attention to those instead of doing the trial and error. In Psalms 119, it says, Oh, how I love thy law. It's my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. And I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. If we follow God's words, we're going to be smarter than all the professors at the colleges that tell you that they was just something, nothing blew up one day and nothing blew up and made all the universe and everything else evolved. I don't have enough faith to believe that. God tells us how it happened. There's wisdom to be found in God's word. And if we use that wisdom, then you can live a life that you grow to an older age, that you have hope for after this life's over with, that you can have uh, relief from maybe some of the bad things that you might have suffered in your life. Paul gave a lot of examples. He said there's two ways. We can either live by our mistakes or we can either listen to God and find those things that we need to do. We can have, uh, Paul gave us some good pointers. And he gave them to a young man named Timothy. He tells them in 1 Timothy 4, Be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Be a good example. Stay in these things. He tells them in, in uh, the next verse, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. In other words, he told him to commit himself to studying and teaching God's word. And the more he did that, the more he would understand God's wisdom. And the more he'd be able to explain that to other people. He also told them to not neglect the gift that was in him. He's telling him there, that the things that you have and the things that God has given you, which God's given us all different things that we can, that we can use, he's telling them to not neglect those things, to work on them. He said in, in verses 15 and 16 of that same chapter, mediate, mediate on these things, give yourselves entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing them, you will save both yourself and, the, yourself and those that hear you. He's telling him to work on it. Each of us has talents. Mine's not much of a preacher, but it's a whole lot better than the first time I tried to get up here and do this. We have to work on those things. Can we triumph over old age and grow old gracefully? Yeah, we can. But I think we have to follow these principles. We have to follow the wisdom of God. We have to realize that just having all the toys in this life isn't where it's at. That abundant life is not in worldly things. We need to sow. We need to make decisions. We need to do things that will bear good fruit and not bad fruit. In Psalms 92, starting in verse 12, it says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there's no unrighteousness in him. Wouldn't you rather be like that? You can by God's grace. The sooner you start a life of following God's will, deciding where the things that you're going to do is going to be 
according to what he wants you to be, the better chances are that you'll live to be an age, that you'll grow old gracefully, that you'll be a, a Christian that sets a good example and lives a life that, that is upright and have that chance of heaven when this life is over. I'm going to finish up here with a reading in Ecclesiastes 12. <clears throat> Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars are darkened and the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because there are few and those who look through windows are dim and the doors on the street are shut when the sound of the grinding is low, when one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of song are brought low. They are afraid also of what is high and tears in the way and the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper drags itself along and desire fails because man is going to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain or the wheels broken at the cistern and the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit returns to God who gave it. It's talking here about the grinders. Your teeth get few as you get older. Your hearing goes. You get to where you don't see good. You tremble. Your back gets all out of shape. I've got a little bit of all those, so I kind of know what's going on. Before that happens, if you'll remember your creator in the days of your youth, you can accept those days as being the days before you get to go to heaven. Think about these things. I hope that's something that's helped everybody a little bit. I haven't actually spoke this morning on what it takes to become a Christian. If you know those things and know that you need to Become a Christian while you're young. Remember your creator in the day of your youth. You can come forward and we will help you. If you have failed in times past and want to have the prayers of the church or anything that we can do for you, we'd ask you please come forward as we stand and as we sing.